made this amazing film 30 years ago in this pub. Mm. So sitting here at the moment feels really charged with something. 30 years later you're here trying to do not the same thing again but something inspired by the same environment again. It just feels like you're walking in good footsteps. The most important thing for, for doing a project is to get everyone thinking the same way um, and, and looking in the same direction. And it's been quite an easy, practical way of saying it'd be really nice to do a folk record informed by what was being done uh, in folk revival in the early 70s and hasn't really been run with that much, I don't think. I think you need to come up here and meet people and, and hang out in the area and, and we're, attempt, we're not attempting to do something that's to do with ancient pagan sacrifices, we're trying to do something that's to do with a group of artists who made a brilliant film in 1973 and by far the best way of understanding what they were thinking at the time was to come to exactly where they did it 30 years later, sit there and pick up a guitar and go what did it feel like to be in this alcove playing that music at that time. looks refreshing, it still looks, it looks kind of alien because everything else looks so staid. It's supposed to be a Hammer Horror sort of tribute. There's this alien music, this alien culture, these alien looking actors like Lindsay Kemp and Aubrey Morris and people like that, and Christopher Lee not being Dracula and Edward Woodward being an idiot and all these people playing against type. Made, it was made at a time when British film didn't really know what it wanted to do. It wasn't going anywhere, was it? That's and, so uh, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anything yeah, can know. happen. I they, know. They get this film and they go, "What do we do with this?" It's just—it's not a horror film. It's not a musical. First of all, we parked ourselves in the church at Amworth, didn't we? Yeah, sat in a church in Amworth and, and, and played some stuff. <laughs> I wish I'd done that. You tell me how long to hold the cord and I'll hold it twice as long as you said. It's just really nice to come and just like, soak, soak it up. I suppose there's some of our music that was, uh, I mean, if there's going to be any pictures to it, uh, songs like If You Want Your Daughter from an early EP, even more recently than the last album. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's going to be pictures to it, it'll probably look a little bit like what we've seen around here. Yeah.
of this hill and you could see these two stumps of wood sticking up um, just on the sheltered edge of the cliff uh, and that's all that remains of one of the two prop wicker men that get burned at the end of the film. Uh, it's rare you get to find a 30 year old film prop just lying around in the field. Normally the way folk music is supposed to be passed on from generation to generation is that you hear it. Um, and certainly at our age, where we were growing up, you didn't hear folk music. The only places that I ever heard folk music growing up were Bagpuss. The soundtrack to Bagpuss was when you really literally thought, this is really weird and quite engaging, what's this? That's folk music. And then the soundtrack for this, and it was the first time I'd heard folk music be used to be menacing, haunting, erotic, all these things, rather than just beardy and naff, because it's skipped a generation and it's not being taught anymore. The way you find out about it is through things like films which will give you the music and a context and an environment for the music that makes sense rather than hearing it in a folk club or on the radio or something. It gives you a world where that folk music exists and makes it really, really uh, enticing. There's a fear with, with um, picking up on folk music, like there's a fear of British bands picking up on country and western, that you're faking it. And I feel a lot less like faking it with, with, um, with folk music because it comes from this country anyway but also the, the sense that some New York musician in the 1970s for this film picked up on folk music and did something with it. By the time we'd finished doing our trawl round, we'd got uh, a bunch of stuff in the starting blocks, some songs that would form the backbone of an album, paying tribute to the ideas and the music of the film. Uh, and we'd recorded some tentative demos in some really cool places, just because that's a fun thing to do. Uh, given the chance, I think you should always take the opportunity to demo some material on a windswept cliff top uh, with seagulls wheeling round above you, rather than go down to a studio in a railway arch and do it. There's been a lot of talk recently of remaking it or doing a sequel and I think it just misses the point completely. I mean the, the reason this is a film that we still like and people still talk about it is that there's never been another film like it, ever. When I'm not watching that I suppose we'll probably be watching The Three Amigos. Yeah, normally The Three Amigos is <laughs> probably the best film ever made. Yeah, that's actually helpful. Yeah, what we're, talking, we're doing The Three Amigos project next. We're going to El Guapo's camp in Arizona and we're going to do all the songs, Randy Newman's songs from The Three Amigos and an album based on the spiritual meaning of Chevy Chase. Wow. We're looking forward to doing that. Seeing the future, lots of our albums being buried under the M3. 